Welcome to the narrow path that James built. Hope you're well. Well, I've really got to make progress on getting the flue installed today. So first job is to put it in place and mark out where the cut needs to be. I'm going to cut the CS board now and this stuff kicks up quite a bit of dust. So, uh, Well, I eventually managed to get the CS board up on the wall. It's secured in with some screws along some steel braces, so it's got a direct feed back to the steel of the um, of the boat. Now I'd need to put in some more CS just up here on the top and cut a hole out for the chimney. As you'll see, I've had to take off the ceiling panel here um, because I need to reroute these cables. They were they came up to here, which was exactly 12 inches from the flue. So it's kind of on the edge, but I just don't want any wires or cables anywhere near it, to be honest. So I've moved it all the way back to here. So it's a good kind of two and a half, three foot away now. And they're just gonna be, uh, I'm just gluing those bits of conduit in now just to keep the cables well out of the way. So what I've got is the two bits of C CS behind here. And this is a sheet of 0.9 of a mil uh, brushed stainless steel. Um, and this is gonna go on the outside of here. So I'm gonna need to put a crease in this steel um, by hand at that kind of seam there. But before I do that, I need to obviously put the CS board on top of the, uh, on top of the ceiling. So I've had to go and get some more CS board, unfortunately. Um, but there's someone else here on the yard that needs some as well, so that's not so bad. Um, and now I need to put a piece up here and screw it into the ceiling battens there and there and there and there. I'm going to keep those bolts hanging down, even though they're protruding slightly. I'm just going to have to excavate a little bit of the CS board around them. I can't bother to take an angle grinder to it. And what I'm hoping is that the board is going to sit across here. Obviously, I'll cut it out from here. I might do it in one board and fix it up and put that through the middle. Or I might do it in two halves. Which is quite easy to cut this stuff. Well, proceedings have been halted slightly because a fragile package has just arrived. I was expecting something today, but not of the fragile variety and I recognise the name on the side of this box so um, I think this is from Tracy and Lawrence Yeah, it's from Lawrence. Oh, it's food. Ginger faces. Oh my God, it's good food as well. It's bakery food. Almond fingers, brownies, strawberry rounds, caramel bakewells. Oh, oh, raspberry buns. I wish I could share this with you all. I really do. Cherry Bakewells, Lem oh, this is the best. Well, Lawrence, thank you very much. You've, uh, that was definitely worth a um, halt in the proceedings for. And good job you marked these as fragile, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want these ginger phrases to break. So uh, thank you very much. Right, so I've marked out the position for the uh, hole for the flue to go through this. Now I need to, I'm going to cut it with a jigsaw. There's a few ways of doing it. I'm just going to make a hole first just to get the blade in. As I said, there are a few ways of doing this, but I find the jigsaw works quite well.
So this top piece of calcium silicate board is in nice and strong now. It's been screwed into two holes, into uh, two screws there, um, and it's wedged in place there. Um, the objective was to make sure that when this ring sits on the top there above the flue, it sits nice and flush against this surface and whatever goes on this, it's gonna be nice and flush against that. So that's the, uh, that's the important part for that. So that's been achieved. Um, and obviously it's sitting proud of the rest of the ceiling, but that's gonna be the case. I'm gonna to have to put a border on there, a bit of trim around it once I've got it in place. Um, the material I have chosen for this kind of area here is brushed stainless steel. The reason for it is price. So this is the piece I've got. Um, it's 0 0.9 of a mil, so it's gonna it's gonna take a bend, but it's not gonna be easy to bend it. Um, likewise, it's gonna be able to take a jigsaw to get round this, but it's not gonna be a very nice cut it's going to want to tear it on the up so i'm going to have to clamp it in place with two bits of ply um, and cut through the ply and hopefully that will all keep it together so there's a bit of um there's a bit of kind of working out of how to do that but the reason i've gone for stainless that's a piece of four by two so it's going to come from the top here down to this angle down to the bend and it's going to stop around here that's partly because I think I'm gonna put a copper trim around it because I think that will work quite nicely, the copper and the brushed stainless. But the reason I've gone for a brushed stainless is because that piece was 60 quid as opposed to um, 60 quid delivered, that is, cut and delivered, uh, as opposed to a piece of copper, which would have been nearly 300 or 250 to 300 quid for the same piece. But it would have taken four or five days for them to have got the piece of copper to me and because I want it in one one piece installed before the flue goes in, so I don't want a seam there, I want it to be one seamless piece. Uh, I wanted it in before the flue, and I want the flue in tomorrow so I can have my roast by the fire on Sunday, so I'm not mucking around. I'm gonna get it in, um, and that piece of stainless is the answer. Um, the CS board is is being cut oversized, that's fine, so it's a bit, kind of mismatched. Once the uh, stainless is on, I'll trim this back and then the walls will go up to it and there'll be, a, again, a piece of trim between the stainless and the wall. This is all the same flush, so that's fine. Uh, and then when the wall comes out, it will um, the stainless will be about two or three mil behind it. So um, again, a nice little border around there and that'll work fine. You'll see I've, I've brought the CS board down to the tiles that's because I wanted to make sure that there was no heat exchange through the back of the tiles to where the conduit's going to be, um, or where the conduit tray is, shall I say. Um, and also where, wherever I bring down here, it'll, it'll cover the top of the tiles then and have a backing for it. So that was important. So now I've got to put a bend in this, um, in this sheet first. So that's the first thing is get the bend in it and then I can cut the hole. Um, I'm gonna hopefully better screw it in with just um, stainless steel screws all around it. Um, there's no glue or adhesive anywhere around here because obviously it's gonna be subjected to quite a lot of heat. So um, I'm hoping stainless steel screws will take into this all right. Um, I'll have to work that out. I'll have to put some washers on it possibly. But yeah, next job is to measure this out and then put the bend in it. I can only do this once. I cannot get this wrong. Um, so, okay, so to do this, I've had to take the dinette apart a little bit just to uh, get myself some room. And the fabricator just said, keep bending it gradually and it will go and tap it with a hammer a bit. So the thing is, I don't want it to bend in the middle. I do want it to bend down here with this. Let's see what it's like with a hammer. It's Just got to be 
careful because it's stainless, it's bloody sharp. Okay, there's some bend in there. overdo it. Well I don't think I do, unless I do want to overdo it and then I can let it spring back and that might make it more secure, I don't know. But I'm going to offer this up anyway. Looks about right, I've got to say. So I'm trying to improve the crease on this piece of stainless and I've kind of set it up on a bit of a, I don't know what you'd call that, uh, but I've made some screw holes in there where they're gonna be anyway on the wall, so I needed them anyway. I've secured it to this piece of wood here, I've got a batten here, and I'm just trying to kind of, I can get the sides in, that's fine, it's just this middle, the middle part here, it's just hard to, I mean, getting a bend in metal has always been a damn hard thing to do. Got a DIY at home. Oh. Yeah, that's a better line to it now. Well, the piece of stainless as you can see is still here um it's got a better line to it i'm going to see if um if tomorrow paul and i can maybe improve that line slightly um we could put some heat to it and um that might that might help slightly um what i don't want it to be is under any stress at all um certainly on that seam because it's only being screwed into that uh, calcium silicate board and that stuff can, well, it's it, it just pulls apart quite easily. So I just want it to be attached on there quite nicely. I don't want it to have to be kind of taut in any way. So I'll carry on with that tomorrow. But I think uh, in terms of my target of having a Sunday roast here by the fire is still tickety-boo because I've got to get the flue cement put in tomorrow lunchtime in order for me to give that 24 hours for it to go off for me to light the, f the fire kind of early morning Sunday. So that's that's still kind of uh, on schedule, so that's fine. So all I really need to do tomorrow is to paint the flue. Well, I'll do that tonight, I've got to spray that. Put, up, put a bend on this, attach that onto the wall, trim the flue, put the flue in, put the cement round the thing, put the rope round the thing at the top, a whole load of um, flue silicon, and that should be enough. That's kind of it, that's all that needs to be done now. Um, and then kind of a clean up round the area and get myself some coal and some kindling. So that should, that should yeah, that should be it. I'm gonna check I've got all the screws to go onto this. This is gonna take quite a few to go round this um, into the ceiling and into the wall. As I said, I don't want it to be under, under any stress, so quite a lot of screws, and I think I'm going to go for quite thick, chunky screws uh, just to give it as much kind of grip in there as I can. If anyone's got any suggestions as to any um, kind of additives I could add to the screws to give it some extra security in there, obviously it's going to be resistant to heat um, because of well, where it is. Um, but I can't, I can't quite think of anything which is going to off the top of my head. But if, yeah, if anyone's got any ideas, then that would be very welcome. Um, but yeah, that's the plan for um, tonight. I'll drill out all the holes, mark them up, get them all right, and then I've got to cut the hole in for this uh, for the flue. I'm not too sure uh, the best way of doing that um, because the marking up of it is not particularly easy because there isn't exactly a line here. I could angle it, I could mark it from the top edge 
um, which is probably what I'll have to do. Um, but going through it with a jigsaw, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be the best way. Um, but I think I'll I think it's best to do it whilst it's not in place. So that is probably going to have to be a job for tonight or tomorrow morning as well. As I said, I need to clamp that in with some kind of scrap wood uh, to make sure that the blade doesn't tear or rip the um, the sheet material. It's um, just going back to the, the choice for this, um, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was because I needed to get it done fairly kind of quickly. The copper would have been Tuesday or Wednesday at the earliest and then would have taken a lot of work and as they, the price of it was just insane. Um, talking about insane prices, lots of people commented uh, on the last video as to why I just don't get a single, a, a, um, a uh, insulated flue or a twin wall flue. The, the, the simple reason is cost, they're 600 quid, as opposed to the single wall flue, which is about 100. Yes, there's some material to go on the wall, but to be honest, you, sh you know, you need to fireproof it anyway. Um, a single wall, f a twin wall flue, it's not exactly freezing cold. Um, yes, it's okay to touch, but there's still a lot of heat radiance there, so you still need to do something to it. So it's not like I'm doing all this for no point, um, or I wouldn't need to do it if I if I had a, a twin wall flue. I'd still have to do some of this stuff. So, um, but, and, and the other thing is I don't need to have a, a twin wall flue because it's a 50 year old boat. It's only um, on brand new boats is where that, is where that um, regulation comes into play. But on, um, on an old boat, it doesn't need to. And single wall flues have been in existence for 200 years. Um, they've worked fine. It's, um, as long as it's installed correct, like anything, as long as it's installed correctly um, and has got the right fireproofing and fire safety measures around it, it's fine. Um, as I said, it's only when you know mistakes are made or shortcuts are taken is when um, you know danger and, and risks are there. But this is going to be fine. This CS board um, is, is 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 the best protection you can have. And there are no combustibles anywhere near the flue, so I can light the fire and keep it going overnight in the sound knowledge that it's been installed correctly, um, and that's the uh, that's the name of the game. So I'll carry on with that later and tomorrow. Hope you guys are very well. Until next time, take care. Bye bye.